you know, I meant to make a good documentary of this, something with real life examples. Um, you know, I've got some Edison batteries, some huge ones, not not the submarine battery, <clears throat> but big enough to kind of get a visual. I may make those documentaries or whatever, but I've been wanting to do that for like three or four years now. I haven't been able to do it, so I'm just going to knock this out. i got to go to work here soon. But the uh, question is, if you had five to ten minutes to tell Elon Musk something, what would you tell him? Engineering stuff, you know, not something like that that that's philosophical or or goofy town or whatever. Because he, he's he's uh, you know he's technical, so he's got other ass assets too, but aspects but anyway you don't be wasting your time so if you had like five to ten minutes because for him that's probably millions of dollars worth of time so this is what i would tell him and maybe he already knows maybe he doesn't care who knows but i would put it out and it's not to make me feel grandiose or anything it's just i don't have the ability to replicate these or some derivative um assumably he does or one of his competitors. Um, so this book is a replicant book. It is copyright free. Made by these. They screwed up. They didn't include the cover title photo with uh, Edison um, manipulating one of these batteries. Uh, but here's the gist of what I want to get out real quick before I got to leave. Um, I'm pretty much an economic bind like I did to myself I didn't understand um, what I was doing was just kind of screwing around I, I would read books for hours and hours I play video games and stuff not realizing that that's like throwing money down a down a down a fire pit because an hour of reading or an hour of video games is an hour you're not getting paid wages and I didn't know about turning wages into investments and turning the investments and the more investments i didn't know all that so anyway i know that now it'd be a while to dig myself out but during all that i bought some edison batteries specifically the nickel iron started learning about them and uh it's quite a huge subject and they don't teach you about them in engineering schools they don't teach about it in military schools and stuff anymore it's basically um it's basically been obsoleted because they're not as efficient uh, capacity wise as some of the modern formulas but at the same time they outlive all known batteries as far as cycle life and, and uh, being resilient and things and stuff so what I'm getting at is Edison developed submarine batteries these are huge batteries the biggest ones he had out of his technology and um, with uh, the Edison nickel iron batteries, the uh, similar to I don't know, I'd say like the uh, future Cybertruck has stainless steel exterior. Um, it's not prone to, to uh, destruction from the environment, or whatever. Same with these batteries. The the case, the components are not prone to destruction. The only thing that would degrade was uh, on a human uh, cognitive scale was the electrolyte and you'd replace it just like you'd replace um, you know water in your radiator in your car or you'd replace uh, you know uh, on a hot day you drink some electrolyte sports drink and stuff to rep so basically you would replace the fluid you know replace place like the oil in your car you know it goes bad you know so anyway you'd replace the um the electrolyte it was potassium hydroxide lithium uh, monohydrate and distilled water <clears throat> um side note they found out that that uh is a uh liquid that would absorb um uh harmful carbon in uh, submarines i did a little time in a submarine 
I think they call it amine or amine, I forget, but it absorbs the carbon. It prolongs your oxygen. I know they use it in uh, the space program too. So anyway, um, it was an ideal system. You know, you'd have electrolyte that would go bad eventually, but while it did, it would purify your, your oxygen. So, okay. And so um, knowing that, you'd have to uh, change the electrolyte. Well, knowing that, he put spigots at the bottom of the battery so you could change it out easily. That's that. There's no spigots in the, on any of his other batteries. And so um, it was it was easy to change. Just like you'd have a um, a drainage uh, um, access uh, bolt or something at the bottom of your oil pan so you drain it. Same with these batteries. So um, the batteries would last and last. When they go bad would be the electrolyte and you change the electrolyte easily. Swap it out with new stuff that you mix up. And you drain them. And it's so easy. And it's simple. Problem is, when the Navy was testing these, um, there was a bad reaction. So either the ventilation or whatever wasn't sufficient. <clears throat> there was an explosion. The investigation, court thing. Anyway, the Navy d disowned this technology. So, um, what I would say, what I would tell uh, Mr. Elon Musk, the, the future Mars uh, emperor, probably, or or or, or more worse. <laughs> um, the the idea of getting these batteries is replicating them. Is if you want large scale storage that lasts, and if you're interested, I know you're not. As part of one of your interviews, you're not particularly interested in hydrogen as a as a uh, energy. Um, Uh, energy option, but the kickoff hydrogen, the event hydrogen, you could you could probably reuse that in a fuel cell or something. I know, I know you, you're grumpy about fuel cells or whatever. Uh, one of your interviews, who knows if your mind changed. But if it was off, if it was off, uh, off offshoot process, and you can get this. I'm just trying to find a picture. This is just some of the, the what's in there. You can get this book. I'm probably gonna republish this material in a better size in my in my upcoming uh, Edison Nick Arn Battery Encyclopedia, the new version. I have I have an old version, it's on Amazon right now. But it's missing a lot of data I found in the, in the years since. Well here here's what I was looking for. So obviously you, it had handling hook uh, attachments. I'm trying to look, find the valve at the bottom. One of these pictures. Oh, come on. I'm running out of time here. So I got less than two minutes. So um, anyway, I tell I tell Elon Musk to check out the submarine nickel iron battery and replicate it in some way. Darn it. I don't see, you know, I don't see the valve. Where's the, where's the sticking valve at the bottom? Is that one of the technical drawings here? Uh, well, that's not what I was looking for. There's missing missing data in this thing. Um, but this little blurb right there is interesting. It said, uh, "Impossible for flame to get into or out of the cell." So I'm not I'm not conveniently there's oh there we go the drain tube the drain tube there's there's some data on there figure 14 okay there's a drain tube figure four, 60 figure 14 right there am I crazy it's not at the bottom Oh, that's good. I, I'm finally learning that on the on the fly. There's a drain tube. I figure 14 secured to cover the cell and passing down one side of the cell within one half inch of the bottom. It is provided at the top with a cap for properly sealing when not in use. So when it becomes necessary to remove the electrolyte from the cell after 
term of years, it is only necessary to apply air to the water seal outlet. A hose attached to the drain tube deposits the electrolyte in a steel drum or other steel vessel for treatment, after which it may be returned to the cell again. So you can, you can recycle the electrolyte. Um, the drain tube also serves the additional function of allowing air to be passed through the electrolyte for the removal of CO2 from the air as an emergency measure of force prolonged submersion, you know. So anyway, okay, so I was wrong. It comes out the top. <laughs> there's, there's like a like a pneumatic tube or whatever. Pneumatic, um, I got to go to work. That's my alarm. So there you go. Check it out, Mr. Elon Musk. And um, just, just spend a minute on this instead of all those crazy-ass Twitter memes.